I'm happy to announce that the All Iron Battery 2.0 has been accepted for publication in the peer-reviewed journal Hardware X, the journal of open source hardware. For those of you who may be new here, back in 2017, we set out to develop an open source all iron radically inexpensive battery with the help of some very generous crowdfunders. To accomplish this, we started with iron because iron is one of the most abundant elements on earth, as well as being one of the most radically and widely exploited elements in the human economy. Humans produce on the order of a billion tons of iron per year, every year. And iron has some properties that we can use if we want to make a battery. Now using an iron electrode in a battery is not particularly new. The Edison battery invented more than 100 years ago uses an iron anode. In the Edison cell, when the iron anode oxidizes or rusts, it gives up electrons. And those electrons are transferred over to a nickel cathode, which accepts those electrons and is reduced. To reverse the reaction and charge the battery, electrons are forced out of the nickel and back into the iron to make iron metal again. But nickel is relatively expensive and the Edison cell uses a caustic potassium hydroxide electrolyte, which is uh, modestly dangerous. So back in 2017, we set out to replace the nickel electrode with an iron-based electrode. This drastically reduced the performance of the battery. Unfortunately, that means this battery won't be powering any cars. The battery would have to be bigger than the car itself. The idea was that we could use it for stationary applications where it doesn't have to move and its weight isn't a problem. Maybe it could eventually be used to store renewable energy, solar or wind. Unfortunately, by the time we were done, it was still underpowered even for these sort of stationary applications. So we set out to improve it more recently. But here's how the battery works in general. So first let's define our terms. There are three kinds of iron, iron metal or iron zero, ferrous iron or iron two plus, and ferric iron or iron three plus. When iron metal oxidizes or rusts, it becomes mostly iron two plus, ferrous iron, it gives up electrons in the process or is oxidized. We used ferric iron to take up those electrons, whereupon it is reduced to ferrous iron. So as the battery is discharged, it generates ferrous iron in general, and as the battery is charged, we regenerate the iron metal at the anode and the iron three plus or ferric iron at the cathode. We have to include a membrane for the battery to balance its charge. We don't want those electrons to build up a static electric charge on either side and so to balance that we need to move ions around so in this case we didn't want to use that caustic potassium hydroxide so we used a more neutral solution with plenty of ions to move through the membrane and balance that charge now we showed the iron battery 1.0 could charge and discharge many times but it could only do so very very slowly meaning that it would take something like 48 to 72 hours to fully discharge or charge the cell even at maximum discharge rate, it would still take days to discharge. So this is not ideal for any application. Only the most low power uh, circuits can use this sort of battery. Now this is called a high internal resistance, meaning that the battery itself acts as a very intense resistor to the flow of electricity. This is not ideal. And so we set out to reduce that high internal resistance for iron battery 2.0. So we tried a bunch of things, but we worked under the following hypothesis that the electrons had to flow through the electrolyte to get to the iron three plus because iron three plus is non-conductive and that flow through the electrolyte was slow and was causing the whole battery to be low powered so we figured if we could reduce the distance from the current collector to the iron three plus we would increase the power of the battery to do that, we included a bunch of carbon black, which is a conductive form of carbon often used in conductive inks to carry the electrons from the carbon current collector as close as possible to the iron three plus. We also improved the electrolyte salt mix slightly. It turns out that sodium isn't really necessary, but every other ion in the mix was necessary without the sulfate, chloride and potassium the cell simply wasn't as able to charge and discharge. We also slightly improved the procedure for neutralizing the electrolyte to pH 7.5, and that was in the last update video, the 1.5 version. So that's how we improved the battery. The updates are all available, and the link is in the description for Iron Battery 2.0. It now can deliver a more useful amount of energy per second. It has a higher power density, and I think at this point it's getting close to a practical level. We now have enough power from a single iron battery 2.0 cell to illuminate an LED. 
Iron Battery 1.0 required six cells in series to generate that much power. If we were to scale up to the size of a shipping container, or about 100 meters cubed, we'd have enough power and energy to supply about four efficient homes for several days. In more technical terms, we went from a power density of about one milliwatt per liter, which is really tiny, up to almost 250 milliwatts per liter. So a significant improvement. The construction is equivalent to Iron Battery 1.5. The video link is in the description below. And the detailed instructions, including a bill of materials and a links to all of our resources on where we bought all of our parts, is available at the paper, which is also linked in the description below. So there it is. That's the end of the Iron Battery story on this vlog. I will update here if we have any more progress. Uh, my co-author Deepak Kwarla is still working on this a little bit in his PhD thesis, and so if he has another publication, I'll be delighted to update that here. But for the most part, we'll be moving on to other topics on this vlog. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, or science in general, I hope you'll tune back in. We will be updating on the things that I'm interested in here. And also you can check out the paper at HardwareX in the link below, and you can check out my blog at peterallenlab.com. Thanks for watching.